Thank you for staying late in the day. I know that there's only one more talk before the conference closes, but I appreciate that you're here. Before I get started, I'd like to ask how many of you have had good, what you consider to be good foundational nutritional training uh, in your practice or prior to your practice in school? Okay. So it looks like most of you are interested in the topic from an educational point of view instead of coming here to try to tear me apart, and I appreciate that. So, okay. Darwin's theory of natural selection still applies. There have been some changes. The fittest are now those who detoxify most efficiently. It's no longer the strongest, fastest, or most intelligent. Things have really changed. So if you're not detoxifying, premature aging, and the ultimate effect of premature aging, which is premature death, is imminent. So the whole game has changed. So detoxification is now the game that we must play in order to survive the longest. So this is a kind of a basic uh, maxim. The rate of detox detoxification must exceed your rate of intake of toxins. Okay? It's, it just makes common sense. Incidentally, let me interrupt for a moment. They asked me to prepare a 20-minute presentation, and I find out I have 45 minutes, and this is actually a different presentation than I sent them the second time around. So this is going to be an exploration for me as well as for you. Uh, in order to optimize uh, detoxification, there are certain functions that just have to be optimized. Hydration, number one. Elimination, digestion, and assimilation, and these are all foundations that are not taught in medical school correctly, and if they are, they're only addressed for about 30 minutes. And those of you who have been to medical school, as I have, know that this is a fact, that the, uh, the training in these functions is, it kind of falls into the category of nutrition and it's brushed over. There's also a, tr uh, a tremendous amount of misinformation and any additional training you've received in nutrition regarding these topics. So I've spent a good deal of the last 20 years trying to refine protocols and assessment techniques that really address these correctly, and that's what I'll be presenting hopefully in a nutshell for you in short order, and then we'll have question and answer afterward if that's all right. Okay, fundamentals of hydration. Trying to research this is quite a trick. It turns out that people really haven't done their homework on this, though there is one government document uh, that has uh, taken a collection of studies, and this is what they determined. The resting human body needs four ounces of water every 30 minutes to do basic metabolic functions. That doesn't mean eight hours every hour. That means four hours every 30 minutes. So uh, when they tell you drink two quarts of water per day, that's a, a rough approximation of what you need, but you can't do it all at once at night before bed because it won't work that way. You have to have a constant supply of hydration because that's what the cellular metabolism requires to be efficient. So this is a good basic rule for all patients. And here is a formula that will help you figure it out here in a moment. Okay, you take their body weight, Divide it by two, and that's the number of ounces of water they need per day. Plus, you have to add eight ounces for every vice. That means beer, coffee, wine, uh, etc., and four ounces of water in addition to that for every hour of exercise. So this is a simple formula that actually nails it down. It really does work. So this is a good thing to, to um, pass out to your patients, and I believe this PowerPoint will be available on the uh, A4M website so you can get the, the protocols from there. If not, you can always email me at the end of my talk. I'll give you an email address and I will reply to you. So these are the basic rules uh, of what you should be drinking. It should be pure filtered water only. Well water is real trouble. Um, regardless of some of the better mineral content it may have, most of it is troublesome anymore just because of the contamination in the soil that filters into the uh, water table. Glass containers only. And you should add electrolytes as needed. Do not trust any plastic bottles. Through the last five years, we've seen uh, proclamations that certain plastics are safe, like Nalgene was considered safe for a long time. Now it's considered terribly toxic. And the numbers on the bottom of, of plastic bottles that tell you whether they can be recycled or not used to be trustable. You can't trust them anymore. Every year there's new information about a new toxin in the plastics that, are, uh, that we're buying water in. Uh, that leads me to believe that we should only drink out of plastic, uh, or excuse me, glass bottles, and we should void all plastics. I think, personally, I think that plastics are becoming one of the worst toxi uh, toxifying agents uh, in our environment, and it's getting worse every year. There are more than 60,000 new chemicals, I believe, added to our systems each year because of the chemical industry, and they do not have a concern in human health. Unless, of course, they're part of the pharmaceutical industry, and then they're more concerned with disease than they are with health. So anyway, that's a little philosophical argument I won't get into until later. 
Um, the next thing we must consider is elimination. You know, if people aren't eliminating properly, they're going to build up toxins. Premature aging is inevitable there, too. So a lot of physicians forget that constipation is not a disease. It's simply a symptom. And we've got to remember, unless we're really going to practice purely allopathic techniques, that we've got to treat the underlying cause. So, and there are also no rules for correct bowel movements. This is a, something that's taught in nutrition schools and in, in uh, naturopathic school that's simply wrong. If you really read the literature, you'll find out that it has to do with the length of the alimentary canal, uh, the degree and, and amount of peristalsis, uh, transit time, what the patient's eating, what their basic metabolic rate is. There are a lot of different factors. What we're looking for is consistency. You know, if people are truly constipated and they're eating more than they're displacing, what's going to happen? They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're going to be basically a human bag of feces. And we don't see that very often. So really, uh, a regular bowel movement is what the patient thinks it is and what he's used to and what is uh, normal for him. So uh, judging them uh, any other way is a mistake. Okay, these are the main causes. And you'll see right at the top, hypochlorhydria. Number one, and that's going to be a big part of what I'm talking about the rest of the talk here. This is a huge uh, issue that is not addressed correctly throughout medicine, including naturopathic medicine and nutrition. It is a greatly misunderstood topic. So I'll get into that in more detail. Lack of fluids, number two, inactivity. Food sensitivities, huge issue again. If you are not testing for food sensitivities with every single patient, you are in trouble and you will not be able to fully help them. It simply won't work. If a patient is, is uh, ingesting an insult once a day or even once a week, you're, they're suppressing immune function, metabolic efficiency, they're going to gain weight, and they're going to age. It's just a simple mathematical equation. So food sensitivity testing is really critical. The rest of these things are less important and less significant. Okay, the, next, the first thing to do is optimize hydration, and I just give you the rules for that. Take the body weight, divide by two. That's the number of ounces of, of water they need to consume during their waking hours. Okay, Reduce pr processed foods. Uh, and then a real nice trick is to go to two whole and unprocessed non-gluten grain servings per day. And that doesn't mean bread, pasta, things like that. You've got to actually get the grains. And there's some very interesting grains out there, amaranth, quinoa, millet, spelt, that a lot of people haven't had that when they're introduced to them, they really like them. And if you haven't tried them, I recommend that you do, and you'll find that these whole grains will correct constipation most of the time. Uh, you want to eliminate food sensitivities, as I said. Just moderate exercise is enough, and at the, la the very last thing you want to do is get involved with laxatives. They are trouble, addictive, and they don't solve the problem. Again, this is a purely allopathic approach to go to laxatives. 